we're about to use one of the most powerful and fun concepts in Python. And we're gonna use that power to prevent Ben, evil Ben, from entering our coffee shop. Cause we don't want Ben here. Get out of here, Ben. You know who you are. This is episode four of Python Right Now, my free Python course, where I'm gonna teach you pretty much everything you need to know to become amazing and awesome and dangerous in Python. So yeah, get your coffee ready, get your French press, get your coffee pot. We're gonna dive in here. And our first task will be preventing evil Ben from entering our coffee shop. We're kind of putting in a robot bouncer barista. Now, just like episodes one through three and pretty much this entire course, you won't need a dang thing to do this tutorial, nothing. I'll provide a lab for you inside your browser. Check it out, link below. It's so cool. And yeah, you're gonna be doing this hands-on. You're gonna be following along with me on this because that's the only way to learn Python and programming in general, pretty much anything in IT. Hands-on, lab it up. Actually, hold on, I take that back. I said nothing, but you actually do need the most important ingredient in anything in IT, and that's coffee. Because everything in IT requires delicious coffee. Never chucked out coffee. I'll put it this way. If you drink some coffee, you can continue, else, leave and go make some coffee, then come back. <laughs> You'll get that here in a bit. Now you're probably watching this episode and wondering, hey, uh, where's the rest of it? Why is Chuck producing this course so slow? And you're right, I'm sorry, because I know you want to go deeper into Python right now. You don't want to wait for me and you shouldn't. So check out the sponsor of this video in this entire series, IT Pro TV. IT Pro TV is the best IT training platform out there. They are what I use to train in IT. So if you want to dive deeper into Python right now, because you should, They've got you covered with some amazing courses. Hands-on Python for networking professionals. Super cool, by the way, you gotta try that one out. Intro to Python programming, a great starter course. Ooh, check this one out, Python for security. What is that? Okay, yeah, this is pretty cool. You can create your own network port scanner with Python. Basically create your own Python hacking tool. That's amazing. And they don't just have Python, they have pretty much everything you need to start your IT career and then advance your IT career. They got you covered from the CompTIA A+, to my personal favorite, the Cisco CCNA. So if you're tired of messing around, you actually wanna accelerate your career or change your career into IT, now's the time. Check out IT Pro TV, and if you use my link below or code network Chuck, you get 30% off. Hold on. <sighs> Forever. So if you wanna study like me, check them out, link below. Okay, let's talk about Ben, evil Ben. <laughs> this guy's nasty. Evil Ben hates coffee and he hates IT, he hates technology. We can't have this guy in our coffee shop. So here's what we gotta do. We gotta program a robot barista bouncer <laughs> to prevent him from coming into our coffee shop. So here's the logic. I wanna say, hey, if Ben comes in, a guy named Ben, so sorry all Bens out there, it's unfortunate that your name is Ben, but what are you gonna do? If Ben comes in, we want our robot barista bouncer to say, hey, Get out of here, we don't want your kind here. And if their name isn't Ben, then they're cool. They can come in, they can have some coffee and we'll let them continue on. And this is the powerful stuff we're learning in this video. We can change what our programs do based on certain things that happen. If Ben comes in, do something different. That's cool. So go ahead and fire up your Python lab. Again, this lab is completely free right here in your browser or it can even be on your phone. So check that link below and get signed up and let's keep going. And go ahead and fire up the first episode four lab. Okay, here we are in our Python lab. It should look just like this, and this might look familiar. This is the beginning of our robot barista script that we worked on in previous episodes. And now somewhere in here, we wanna program a robot barista bouncer. Where do you think we should put him? Keeping in mind that first we have to learn the name of the person entering. So if they are Ben, and we're like, get out of here, Ben. So where do you think it should go? I think it should go right around here. Right after we ask, hey, what's your name? Let's put some space there. Now we're gonna start with this. Type in if and space. This is a huge concept, which it may not seem like much. It's just two letters, but it's huge. It's referred to as an if statement. And let me show you what it does. Check this out. We'll say if name, the variable name, which we're pulling from right here. This particular line of code is gonna say, hey, what's your name? And the person will answer and it gets stored inside that variable name. So if Ben comes in, that name will equal Ben. And then we'll add this, if name equals equals and we'll do a string, Ben, colon, and we'll stop there, right? I, I don't wanna keep going. Here's what's happening. What we're saying here is if the variable name equals the string Ben, then I want you to do something. Do something different. So go ahead and put your cursor right after that colon. Hit enter, and we're gonna do something. Let's just say print, and we'll print out, you're not welcome here, evil Ben. Get out! That should do it. 
Now there's a lot going on here, but just real quick, let's run the code. So at the top, we'll click on run. Our script's gonna run, it's gonna ask me my name. I wanna test it first to say my name is Chuck to avoid the yelling. Okay, cool, just says hello Chuck, thank you for coming in today, awesome. Let's run it again, let's see what happens. This time, my name's Ben. Ah, <laughs> I yelled at myself. You're not welcome here, evil Ben, get out. Now I know, it seems like we're a bit bipolar here <laughs> because we're like, get out of here. But then we're like, hello Ben, thank you for coming in today. We'll fix that. Now if statements are powerfully simple, all we're doing here is saying if whatever comes after it is true, then do something. That's all we're doing. So if the variable name does indeed equal the string Ben, then do whatever we say after that. Now, do you wanna see something else powerful? Watch this. We're gonna add one more little building block to this. So right now we're saying if this statement is true, do something. But we can also make it do something if that statement is false. Watch this. New concept time. I'm going to hit enter and do this with me. Enter, then I'll do shift tab st to step back to where my cursor's right in line with the if. And I'll type in else, colon, and then enter. And what I'll put there is I'll actually take my other print function down here, just control X to cut that and paste that right here. So now, do you see what's happening? Oh, so powerful. So now if your name is Ben, if this does evaluate to true, bam, we're gonna kick you out. You can't come in here, Ben. But if your name isn't Ben, if this does evaluate to false, then we'll do something else, <laughs> else. And that's the logic. If this is true, do this. Else, do that. <laughs> kind of cool, right? And we actually just fixed our issue that we had up here, being bipolar. We're like, hey Ben, don't come in here, I hate you. By the way, come in, I love you. Like, that's really confusing. But we fixed it, let's run the code. Run, what's my name? My name is Ben, Evil Ben. Look at that, you're not welcome here, Evil Ben, get out. And it just said that, it didn't welcome me. And then if I run the code again, and I'm not Ben, I'm Patricia, a nice friendly greeting. Is it that powerful? How cool is that? Think of all the things you can do. And we'll talk about that here in a bit. But first, let's pop the hood a little bit on how this is working. Notice our spacing. For example, notice right after our if statement, the thing we want to happen if this does evaluate to being true, it's indented. It's got space right here. And then notice the else. What else will happen is not indented. It's on the same line as if. But then what we want to happen else what else is indented after that? This is a key Python concept because Python does care about your spacing. It will change how it evaluates your code or it might just give up and end in an error saying, hey, I don't understand what you're saying to me. Where's your spacing? So for example, if we did not use any good spacing here, if I were to go in here and do this with me, we'll see the error together. If I step that back and do the same thing to else, run the code, it's like, whoa, 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 ah, we don't like that, indentation error an unexpected indented block. But thankfully, when we're using code editors like this, they make it easy for us to kind of know when we have to do some spacing. So let's go ahead and comment out all the code in this editor right now, just so we can cleanly play with some stuff and give you a good chance to practice your commenting out. That way when we run this, nothing runs and we have plenty of room to play. So just below all this mess, let's practice our if statements. So I'll type in if, and again, I love code editors because notice, as soon as it became an if, like right now it's I, it's just white text, but bam, if is something else, and the code editor knows that. And at this moment, it's waiting for us to give it a statement to evaluate. So now try this, another new concept. If four, the number four, an integer, is greater than three, colon, I've got a greater than sign. We'll talk about that here in a second. Let's keep practicing. So the colon means we're done. If we hit enter after the colon, bam, already indented, which is nice. And then we'll just print out, Yep, it's true. And then right here at the end of our print function, hit enter, and we can still do more stuff. We could do more print functions. Let's actually, you gotta do that. It's still true. As long as our code is still indented underneath this if statement, it'll only run if this is true. So if we run that code, just go do it right now. Yes, it's true. Yes, it's still true. And let's practice our else statement. Just after the second print statement, we'll hit enter. And notice it's still like saying, hey, do you still wanna write some code if this is true? We'll say, no, no, no. We'll do shift and tab to step back and we'll type in else. And notice how it changes color, it's expecting that. That's good, it works. We don't need it, but we can do it. And then we'll hit enter once more to do something else. And we'll print, nope, not true. Now real quick, little small challenge for you, not crazy. Make it to where this is a false statement. Just change the if statement real quick. It shouldn't be too crazy. I mean, all you have to do is this. So go ahead and follow along. I'll say if two, is greater than three, which you know two is obviously not greater than three, then that statement should evaluate to false. Let's run the code. Bam, nope, 
not true. So we got the spacing down, now let's talk about the greater than symbol right here, which is also known as a comparison operator. Big words. You may recognize these from math. I told you we weren't done with math, but Python math is fun, remember? And you'll see all the fan favorites. We got our greater than symbol, our less than, our less than or equal to, and our, oh wait, I wrote that twice. <laughs> Let me change that to look, make it look like a greater than. You thought you almost had me. I didn't make a mistake. I fixed it. Greater than or equal to. Oh, almost forgot. There is one more. It was up here when we used it with Ben. What's with the two equal signs? Well, you may recall that when we define a variable in Python, for example, if I define the variable me equal to network Chuck, notice I'm using only one equal sign. With one equal sign, we're setting the variable me equal to network Chuck. But if we throw in a second equal sign, ah, not plus sign, equal sign, what we're now telling it to do is evaluate if the variable me is already equal to network Chuck. If it is, it will return true. And if it isn't, it'll return false. I don't know what happened to my true. I need to fix that. That looks ugly. There we go. That's better. Now, quick quiz. What do you think will happen when I run this code? Will I get an error? If you thought so, then that's the case. Watch this. Run the code. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. That me variable, it's not even defined. You're trying to say, is it equal to network Chuck? And it's like, it's not equal to anything. You haven't even defined the me variable. All right, quick coffee break, because that was a lot. I know. Here we go. Mm. And one more thing, and then a challenge lab. Let's go ahead and dive in real quick. Now, go ahead and open lab two for episode four. And you'll notice that we already have our bouncer barista robot, or <laughs> robot barista bouncer in there. Here's the code. If evil Ben comes in, bam, we got him. Get out of here, Ben. But now, I want you to notice one thing about this, and this is a, a new concept here. Let's run the code. Let's run it. What's your name? Let's say I am Evil Ben. Evil Ben coming in hot. Notice it tells me, <laughs> you're not welcome here, Ben, get out. But then it's like, let's just continue. What kind of coffee do you want, Ben? <laughs> it's just still a little confusing. How do we fix that? See if you can do it real quick. Now, hint, it's not gonna be an overhaul of the entire script, but let me see if you can get this. And, and you can Google it. Feel free to Google real quick and figure this out. All right, welcome back. Now, you may have been inclined to go, oh, well, the last time we hit this issue, let me stop the script, is we just kept adding everything you want to do in the else statement. Like, okay, well, if Ben's here, kick him out. Else, let's continue the script. We could do that. We could nest all of this remaining script under the else, but that's kind of messy, right? We don't want to do that. We had all this hard work making all this look pretty. So as I mentioned before, you can do things in a lot of different ways in programming. One way is after we evaluate that the name does indeed equal Ben and we yell at him, we'll hit enter right after that print statement and then type in exit and parentheses. What we're saying here is that, hey, if name equals Ben, print this out, and then stop. Exit the program. We're done here. Let's try it out. Click on run. What's your name? My name's Ben. And bam, the script is done. Sorry, Ben, you can't have coffee in here. Whew, okay. That was controlling the flow of your Python programming, and that's just the beginning. Like, we have a lot more to cover with that, and it gets more insane and more fun. Now, as I mentioned before, I've got two additional challenges, two additional labs that you can go through and test your knowledge and get better at this. So link below, go through that. I'll even have a video walkthrough, so check it out. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hack that YouTube algorithm, hit that like button, notification bell, comment, subscribe. You gotta hack YouTube today, ethically, of course. Else, that was a long statement. Else, uh, print, I'm sorry, exit. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. But that's it for episode four controlling our flow of our code in Python, if else, comparison operators. And like I said before, it only gets crazier. And also thanks again to our sponsor, IT Pro TV. If you wanna get into IT or advance in your IT career, they're the place to get started. Again, they are what I used to study. And if you wanna check them out, link below, use code network Chuck and get 30% off forever. And yeah, that's all I got. I'll catch you guys later.